Poso, Natanawe Makanuk, Nawiswan Jessica Pamoni Kut. I am Jessica Waxfors, Executive Chef of Kitapan and Kitchen, um, Chicago's first and only Native American Executive Chef. Uh, <laughs> I also own the only Indigenous catering company in this region. But um, my work is so much more than being a chef. It's uh, being an activist, being an educator, uh, being present in, you know, bringing our culture to the forefront of everything. Uh, so, you know, I took a look at the, the sign and it says, decolonial manifestos, you know, and I think about that every day in the work that I do. Um, you know, as a catering company, you know, bringing a concept to Chicago that hasn't been done before was um, an adventure. And I realized I couldn't do it without bringing that educational component. And then I realized I couldn't do that educational component without you know, doing the groundwork and understanding where the issues are in supplier routes for native providers. Like, I can't go into a grocery store or into a manufacturer and get indigenous foods. And then I needed to understand all those barriers and how we overcome them and how we decolonize our business to operate with authenticity. Um, it has been an, a learning adventure every step of the way, but you know, when people look at our menu, there's a lot of familiar things on there because people don't understand you guys eat indigenous foods every single day. Uh, a lot of people, you know, they don't research histories of their food, just maybe what store they bought it from or where it was grown. But, you know, you have to, you know, have a, a decolonized mindset when it comes to food because it nurtures your spirit. You know, the relationship with your food starts the minute that seed goes into the ground or, you know, whether that bison or, you know, that elk or moose takes its first, you know, steps into this world. There's a relationship that starts there and then it grows. Like, as a food you know, grows, you nurture it. As an animal grows, you nurture it. When it's harvested, you pray for it and you thank it, but then you also give your own sorrows for its, you know, giving its life. There's a relationship there. And then that act of preparing food the act of feeding people as a community, you know, that's a sacred spiritual act. And I always tried to put my best foot forward because, you know, I'm not just feeding your body, I'm feeding your spirit. And I want to do so with good intentions. And, you know, I think about my work and where it's leading me and what I want to do. And our, our biggest vision right now is to, you know, create a nonprofit that addresses food sovereignty and food access and education in this region. If you're not aware, Chicago is home to one of the largest urban Indian populations in the country. Over 100,000 natives representing over 330 of the 570 something federally recognized tribes. We are vast, we are diverse, and we are everywhere. <laughs> and um, with all that in mind and thinking of the work that I do, so I, I wanna make sure that the people in my community are cared for too. Uh, a lot of us have to travel quite a bit to get home and enjoy our, some of our traditional foods. If I want real wild rice, I'm driving 500 miles to get it from home. Um, Deborah, I see you over there. When you watch your traditional foods, how far do you go? <laughs> exactly. And that's our story here. So figure we're looking to create a farm space, a growing space that would grow our traditional foods in a traditional way and allow access to our community, but then the local community surrounding us and then create that education component as well, but also open that space up to small living for community members that are struggling to meet the high cost of living in the Chicagoland area. And then, you know, we have a lot of kids in foster care that phase out at the age of 18 with not a single life skill. They don't, they don't tell them what to do, how to live their life, where to go, and they're just put out there at 18, and we want to create a space for them to be there, to learn a life skill, to be part of community, and to have the support they so desperately need when they face out of foster care. So my vision for my nonprofit is vast, but I have no doubt in my mind that if I work really hard, it will happen. Um, my, my biggest motto is in order to progress, we need to regress. You know, the future is not what it used to be because, you know, everyone thinks the future means getting more advanced, getting more advanced, more technology. That's not what it is. You know, the future is decolonizing our mindsets. It's going back to the way things used to be and doing things in a more natural state with more um, intentional relationships with everything around us from the food that we eat to the people that sit beside us. Take out your earbuds, put your cell phones down, talk to one another. 
Um, today we prepared a beautiful lunch for you all. It was done with a whole lot of love and attention and a whole lot of work. But um, when you sit down and you enjoy that meal, in our way, once you share a meal together, you become a family. So today this room is one big family and I want you to keep that in mind while you eat lunch. Um, we have a couple things out there for you and we also have dinner for you guys later. So today for lunch we have our signature chicken salad and our signature portobello salad for all of our veg friends. You can either have it on bannock rolls or lettuce um, wraps. We also have an Ojibwe purple potato salad, an elote pasta salad, elderflower mousse, which um, everybody seems to love and like to lick the pans when they're done. So if I see you licking pans, I will not be mad at you, I promise. And then we have, I believe, sage mint tea and um, lavender lemonade for lunch. And then later on tonight, you guys are gonna be treated to bison chili or pumpkin chili with cornbread, harvest salad, and I think green tea and blackberry lemonade, so. <laughs> <laughs> so with that being said, lunch is served. I just asked that you let elders eat first and then everybody else go in there, enjoy yourselves, and enjoy your lunch. <laughs>